a declaration of immunity from Allah and His Messenger to those of the pagans with whom you have contracted mutual alliances. Go you then for four months backwards and forwards, as you will throughout the land, but know you that you cannot frustrate Allah by your falsehood, but that Allah will cover with shame those who reject Him. And an announcement from Allah and His Messenger to the people assembled on the day of the great pilgrimage, that Allah and His Messenger dissolve treaty obligations with the pagans. If then you repent, it were best for you. But if you turn away, know you that you cannot frustrate Allah and proclaim a grievous penalty to those who reject faith. But the treaties are not dissolved with those pagans with whom you have entered into alliance and who have not subsequently failed you in aught, nor aided anyone against you. So, fulfill your engagements with them to the end of their term, for Allah loves the righteous. But, when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them, and seize them, beleaguer them, and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war. But, if they repent, and establish regular prayers, and practice regular charity, then open the way for them, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. If one amongst the pagans asks you for asylum, grant it to him, so that he may hear the word of Allah, and then escort him to where he can be secure. That is because they are men without knowledge. How can there be a league before Allah and His Messenger with the pagans, except those with whom you made a treaty near the sacred mosque? As long as these stand true to you, stand you true to them, for Allah does love the righteous. How can there be such a league, seeing that if they get an advantage over you, they respect not in you the ties either of kinship or of covenant? With fair words from their mouths they entice you, but their hearts are averse from you, and most of them are rebellious and wicked. The signs of Allah have they sold for a miserable price, and many have they hindered from His way. Evil indeed are the deeds they have done. In a believer they respect not the ties either of kinship or of covenant. It is they who have transgressed all bounds. But even so, if they repent, establish regular prayers, and practice regular charity, they are your brethren in faith. Thus do we explain the signs in detail, for those who understand. But if they violate their oaths after their covenant, and taunt you for your faith, fight you the chiefs of unfaith, for their oaths are nothing to them, that thus they may be restrained. Will you not fight people who violated their oaths, plotted to expel the messenger, and took to aggression by being the first to assault you? Do you fear them? Nay, it is Allah whom you should more justly fear, if you believe. Fight them, and Allah will punish them by your hands, cover them with shame, help you to victory over them, heal the breasts of believers. And still the indignation of their hearts. For Allah will turn in mercy to whom He will, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Or think you that you shall be abandoned, as though Allah did not know those among you who strive with might and main, and take none for friends and protectors except Allah, His Messenger, and the community of believers. But Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. It is not for such as join gods with Allah, to visit or maintain the mosques of Allah while they witness against their own souls to infidelity. The works of such bear no fruit. In fire shall they dwell. The mosques of Allah shall be visited and maintained by such as believe in Allah and the last day, establish regular prayers, and practice regular charity, and fear none at all except Allah. It is they who are expected to be on true guidance. Do you make the giving of drink to pilgrims, or the maintenance of the sacred mosque, equal to the pious service of those who believe in Allah and the last day, and strive with might and main in the cause of Allah? They are not comparable in the sight of Allah, and Allah guides not those who do wrong. Those who believe and suffer exile and strive with might and main in Allah's cause, with their goods and their persons, have the highest rank in the sight of Allah. They are the people who will achieve salvation. Their Lord does give them glad tidings of a mercy from Himself. 
of his good pleasure, and of gardens for them, wherein are delights that endure. They will dwell therein forever. Verily in Allah's presence is a reward, the greatest of all. O you who believe, take not for protectors your fathers and your brothers if they love infidelity above faith. If any of you do so, they do wrong. Say, if it be that your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your mates or your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear a decline, or the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah, or his messenger, or the striving in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his decision, and Allah guides not the rebellious. Assuredly Allah did help you in many battlefields, and on the day of Hunayn, behold, your great numbers elated you, but they availed you naught. The land, for all that it is wide, did constrain you, and you turned back in retreat. But Allah did pour His calm on the messenger and on the believers, and sent down forces which you saw not. He punished the unbelievers. Thus does He reward those without faith. Again will Allah after this turn in mercy to whom He will, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. O you who believe, truly the pagans are unclean. So let them not after this year of theirs approach the sacred mosque. And if you fear poverty, soon will Allah enrich you, if he wills, out of his bounty. For Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day. Nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and his messenger. Nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book, until they pay the jizya with willing submission, and feel themselves subdued. The Jews call Uzair a son of God, and the Christians call Christ the son of God. That is a saying from their mouth. In this they but imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say. Allah's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. They take their priests and their anchorites to be their lords in derogation of Allah, and they take as their Lord Christ the son of Mary, Yet they were commanded to worship but one God. There is no God but He. Praise and glory to Him. Far is He from having the partners they associate with Him. Fain would they extinguish Allah's light with their mouths. But Allah will not allow but that His light should be perfected, even though the unbelievers may detest it. It is He who has sent His messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to prevail it over all religion even though the pagans may detest it. O you who believe, there are many indeed among the priests and anchorites who in falsehood devour the substance of men and hinder them from the way of Allah. And there are those who bury gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah. Announce unto them a most grievous penalty. On the day when heat will be produced out of that wealth in the fire of hell, and with it will be branded their foreheads, their flanks and their backs. This is the treasure which you buried for yourselves. Taste you then the treasures you buried. The number of months in the sight of Allah is twelve in a year, so ordained by Him the day He created the heavens and the earth. Of them four are sacred. That is the straight usage, so wrong not yourselves therein. And fight the pagans all together as they fight you all together. But know that Allah is with those who restrain themselves. Verily, the transposing of a prohibited month is an addition to unbelief. The unbelievers are led to wrong thereby, for they make it lawful one year and forbidden another year. In order to adjust the number of months forbidden by Allah and make such forbidden ones lawful, the evil of their course seems pleasing to them. But Allah guides not those who reject faith. O you who believe, what is the matter with you, that when you ask to go forth in the cause of Allah, you cling heavily to the earth? Do you prefer the life of this world to the hereafter? But little is the comfort of this life as compared with the hereafter. Unless you go forth, he will punish you with a grievous penalty and put others in your place. But him you would not harm in the least, for Allah has power over all things. If you help not your leader, it is no matter, for Allah did indeed help him when the unbelievers made him leave. 
He had no more than one companion. The two were in the cave, and he said to his companion, Have no fear, for Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his peace upon him, and strengthened him with forces which you saw not, and humbled to the depths the word of the unbelievers. But the word of Allah is exalted to the heights, for Allah is exalted in might, wise. Go you forth, whether equipped lightly or heavily, and strive and struggle with your goods and your persons in the cause of Allah. That is best for you, if you but knew. If there had been immediate gain in sight, and the journey easy, they would all without doubt have followed you, but the distance was long and weighed on them. They would indeed swear by Allah, if we only could, we would certainly have come out with you. They would destroy their own souls. For Allah does know that they are certainly lying. Allah give you grace. Why did you grant them exemption until those who told the truth were seen by you in a clear light? and you had proved the liars. Those who believe in Allah and the last day ask you for no exemption from fighting with their goods and persons, and Allah knows well those who do their duty. Only those ask you for exemption who believe not in Allah and the last day, and whose hearts are in doubt, so that they are tossed in their doubts to and fro. If they had intended to come out, they would certainly have made some preparation therefore, but Allah was averse to their being sent forth. So he made them lag behind, and they were told, Sit you among those who sit inactive. If they had come out with you, they would not have added to your strength, but only made for disorder, hurrying to and fro in your midst, and sowing sedition among you, and there would have been some among you who would have listened to them. But Allah knows well those who do wrong. Indeed, they had plotted sedition before, and upset matters for you, until the truth arrived, and the decree of Allah became manifest, much to their disgust. Among them is many a man who says, Grant me exemption, and draw me not into trial. Have they not fallen into trial already? And indeed hell surrounds the unbelievers on all sides. If good befalls you, it grieves them. But if a misfortune befalls you, they say, We took indeed our precautions beforehand, and they turn away rejoicing. Say, Nothing will happen to us except what Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector, and on Allah let the believers put their trust. Say, Can you expect for us any fate other than one of two glorious things, martyrdom or victory? But we can expect for you either that Allah will send his punishment from himself or by our hands. So wait, expectant, we too will wait with you. Say, spend for the cause willingly or unwillingly. Not from you will it be accepted, for you are indeed a people rebellious and wicked. The only reasons why their contributions are not accepted are that they reject Allah and his messenger that they come to prayer without earnestness, and that they offer contributions unwillingly. Let not their wealth nor their following in sons dazzle you. In reality, Allah's plan is to punish them with these things in this life, and that their souls may perish in their very denial of Allah. They swear by Allah that they are indeed of you, but they are not of you, yet they are afraid to appear in their true colors. If they could find a place to flee to, or caves, or a place of concealment, they would turn straight away thereto, with an obstinate rush. And among them are men, who slander you in the matter of the distribution of the alms. If they are given part thereof, they are pleased. But if not, behold, they are indignant. If only they had been content with what Allah and His Messenger gave them, and had said, Sufficient unto us is Allah. Allah and His Messenger will soon give us of His bounty. To Allah do we turn our hopes. That would have been the right course. Zakah is for the poor and the needy, and those employed to administer the funds, for those whose hearts have been recently reconciled to the truth, for those in bondage and in debt, in the cause of Allah and for the wayfarer. Thus is it ordained by Allah 
and Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. Among them are men who molest the Prophet and say, He is all ear. Say, He listens to what is best for you. He believes in Allah, has faith in the believers, and is a mercy to those of you who believe. But those who molest the Prophet will have a grievous penalty. To you they swear by Allah, in order to please you. But it is more fitting that they should please Allah and His Messenger, if they are believers. Know they not that for those who oppose Allah and His Messenger is the fire of hell, wherein they shall dwell, that is the supreme disgrace. The hypocrites are afraid, lest a surah should be sent down about them, showing them what is really passing in their hearts. Say, mock you, but verily, Allah will bring to light all that you fear should be revealed. If you do question them, they declare with emphasis, We were only talking idly and in play. Say, was it at Allah and His signs and His messenger that you were mocking? Make you no excuses. You have rejected faith after you had accepted it. If we pardon some of you, we will punish others among you, for that that they are in sin. The hypocrites, men and women, have an understanding with each other. They enjoin evil, and forbid what is just, and are close with their hands. They have forgotten Allah, so He has forgotten them. Verily, the hypocrites are rebellious and perverse. Allah has promised the hypocrites, men and women, and the rejecters of faith, the fire of hell. Therein shall they dwell. Sufficient is it for them, for them is the curse of Allah and an enduring punishment. As in the case of those before you, they were mightier than you in power, and more flourishing in wealth and children. They had their enjoyment of their portion, and you have of yours, as did those before you. And you indulge in idle talk as they did. They, their works are fruitless in this world and in the hereafter, and they will lose all spiritual good. Has not the story reached them of those before them? The people of Noah, and Ad, and Thamud, the people of Abram, the men of Median, and the cities overthrown, to them came their messengers with clear signs. It is not Allah who wrongs them, but they wrong their own souls. The believers, men and women, are protectors one of another. They enjoin what is just, and forbid what is evil. They observe regular prayers, practice regular charity, and obey Allah and His Messenger. On them will Allah pour His mercy, for Allah is exalted in power, wise. Allah has promised to believers, men and women, gardens under which rivers flow, to dwell therein, and beautiful mansions in gardens of everlasting bliss. But the greatest bliss is the good pleasure of Allah. That is the supreme felicity. O Prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and be firm against them. Their abode is hell, an evil refuge indeed. They swear by Allah that they said nothing evil, but indeed they uttered blasphemy, and they did it after accepting Islam, and they meditated a plot which they were unable to carry out. This revenge of theirs was their only return for the bounty with which Allah and His Messenger had enriched them. If they repent, it will be best for them. But if they turn back to their evil ways, Allah will punish them with a grievous penalty in this life and in the hereafter. They shall have none on earth to protect or help them. Amongst them are men who made a covenant with Allah that if He bestowed on them of His bounty, they would give largely in charity and be truly amongst those who are righteous. But when he did bestow of his bounty, they became covetous, and turned back from their covenant, averse from its fulfillment. So he has put, as a consequence, hypocrisy into their hearts, to last till the day whereon they shall meet him, because they broke their covenant with Allah, and because they lied again and again. Know they not that Allah does know their secret thoughts and their secret counsels, and that Allah knows well all things unseen? 
Those who slander such of the believers as give themselves freely to deeds of charity, as well as such as can find nothing to give except the fruits of their labor, and throw ridicule on them, Allah will throw back their ridicule on them, and they shall have a grievous penalty. Whether you ask for their forgiveness or not, their sin is unforgivable. If you ask seventy times for their forgiveness, Allah will not forgive them, because they have rejected Allah and His Messenger, and Allah guides not those who are perversely rebellious. Those who were left behind in the Tabuk expedition rejoiced in their inaction behind the back of the Messenger of Allah. They hated to strive and fight with their goods and their persons in the cause of Allah. They said, Go not forth in the heat. Say, The fire of hell is fiercer in heat. If only they could understand. Let them laugh a little. Much will they weep. A recompense for the evil that they do. If then Allah bring you back to any of them, and they ask your permission to come out with you, say, Never shall you come out with me, nor fight an enemy with me, for you preferred to sit inactive on the first occasion. Then sit you now with those who lag behind. Nor do you ever pray for any of them that dies, nor stand at his grave, for they rejected Allah and his messenger, and died in a state of perverse rebellion. Nor let their wealth nor their following in sons dazzle you. Allah's plan is to punish them with these things in this world and that their souls may perish in their very denial of Allah. When a surah comes down enjoining them to believe in Allah and to strive and fight along with his messenger, those with wealth and influence among them ask you for exemption and say, Leave us behind. We would be with those who sit at home. They prefer to be with the women who remain behind at home. Their hearts are sealed and so they understand not. But the messenger and those who believe with him strive and fight with their wealth and their persons. For them are all good things and it is they who will prosper. Allah has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow to dwell therein. That is the supreme felicity. And there were among the desert Arabs also men who made excuses and came to claim exemption. And those who were false to Allah and His Messenger merely sat inactive. Soon will a grievous penalty seize the unbelievers among them. There is no blame on those who are infirm or ill or who find no resources to spend on the cause if they are sincere in duty to Allah and His Messenger. No ground of complaint can there be against such as do right, and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Nor is there blame on those who came to you to be provided with mounts, and when you said, I can find no mounts for you, they turned back, their eyes streaming with tears of grief that they had no resources wherewith to provide the expenses. The ground of complaint is against such as claim exemption while they are rich. They prefer to stay with the women who remain behind. Allah has sealed their hearts, so they know not what they miss. They will present their excuses to you when you return to them. Say you, present no excuses, we shall not believe you. Allah has already informed us of the true state of matters concerning you. It is your actions that Allah and His Messenger will observe. In the end, will you be brought back to Him, who knows what is hidden and what is open? Then will He show you the truth of all that you did. They will swear to you by Allah when you return to them, that you may leave them alone. So leave them alone, for they are an abomination, and hell is their dwelling place, a fitting recompense for the evil that they did. They will swear unto you that you may be pleased with them. But if you are pleased with them, Allah is not pleased with those who disobey. The Arabs of the desert are the worst in unbelief and hypocrisy, and most fitted to be in ignorance of the command which Allah has sent down to his messenger. But Allah is all-knowing, all-wise.
Some of the desert Arabs look upon their payments as a fine and watch for disasters for you. On them be the disaster of evil. For Allah is he that hears and knows all things. But some of the desert Arabs believe in Allah in the last day and look on their payments as pious gifts bringing them nearer to Allah and obtaining the prayers of the Messenger. Ay, hey, indeed they bring them nearer to Him. Soon will Allah admit them to His mercy, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. The vanguard of Islam, the first of those who forsook their homes, and of those who gave them aid, and also those who follow them in all good deeds, well pleased is Allah with them, as are they with Him. For them has He prepared gardens under which rivers flow, to dwell therein forever. That is the supreme felicity. Certain of the desert Arabs round about you are hypocrites, as well as desert Arabs among the Medina folk. They are obstinate in hypocrisy. You know them not. We know them. Twice shall we punish them, and in addition shall they be sent to a grievous penalty. Others they are who have acknowledged their wrongdoings. They have mixed an act that was good with another that was evil. Perhaps Allah will turn unto them in mercy, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Of their goods take alms, that so you might purify and sanctify them, and pray on their behalf. Verily, your prayers are a source of security for them, and Allah is one who hears and knows. Know they not that Allah does accept repentance from His votaries and receives their gifts of charity, and that Allah is verily He, the oft-returning, most merciful. And say, Work righteousness. Soon will Allah observe your work, and His Messenger, and the believers. Soon will you be brought back to the knower of what is hidden and what is open. Then will He show you the truth of all that you did. There are yet others held in suspense for the command of Allah, whether He will punish them or turn in mercy to them, and Allah is all-knowing, wise. And there are those who put up a mosque by way of mischief and infidelity to disunite the believers, and in preparation for one who warred against Allah and His Messenger aforetime. They will indeed swear that their intention is nothing but good, but Allah does declare that they are certainly liars. Never stand you forth therein. There is a mosque whose foundation was laid from the first day on piety. It is more worthy of your standing forth for prayer therein. In it are men who love to be purified, and Allah loves those who make themselves pure. Which then is best? He that lays his foundation on piety to Allah and his good pleasure, or he that lays his foundation on an undermined sand cliff ready to crumble to pieces, and it does crumble to pieces with him into the fire of hell, and Allah guides not people that do wrong. The foundation of those who so build is never free from suspicion and shakiness in their hearts, until their hearts are cut to pieces, and Allah is all-knowing, wise. Allah has purchased of the believers their persons and their goods. For theirs in return is the garden of paradise. They fight in his cause, and slay and are slain. A promise binding on him in truth, through the law, the gospel, and the Qur'an. And who is more faithful to his covenant than Allah? Then rejoice in the bargain which you have concluded. That is the achievement supreme. Those that turn to Allah in repentance, that serve him and praise him, that wonder in devotion to the cause of Allah, that bow down and prostrate themselves in prayer, that enjoin good and forbid evil, and observe the limits set by Allah, these do rejoice. So proclaim the glad tidings to the believers. It is not fitting for the Prophet and those who believe that they should pray for forgiveness for pagans, even though they be of kin after it is clear to them that they are companions of the fire. And Abram prayed for his father's forgiveness only because of a promise he had made to him. But when it became clear to him that he was an enemy to Allah, 
he disassociated himself from him. For Abram was most tender-hearted, forbearing. And Allah will not mislead a people after he has guided them, in order that he may make clear to them what to fear and avoid. For Allah has knowledge of all things. Unto Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and he takes it. Except for him you have no protector nor helper. Allah turned with favor to the Prophet, the Muhajirs, and the Ansar, who followed him in a time of distress. After that the hearts of a part of them had nearly swerved from duty. But he turned to them also, for he is unto them most kind, most merciful. He turned in mercy also to the three who were left behind. They felt guilty, to such a degree that the earth seemed constrained to them, for all its spaciousness and their very souls seemed straitened to them, and they perceived that there is no fleeing from Allah and no refuge but to himself. Then he turned to them, that they might repent, for Allah is oft returning, most merciful. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, and be with those who are true, in word and deed. It was not fitting for the people of Medina and the Bedouin Arabs of the neighborhood to refuse to follow Allah's messenger, nor to prefer their own lives to his, because nothing could they suffer or do, but was reckoned to their credit as a deed of righteousness, whether they suffered thirst or fatigue or hunger in the cause of Allah, or trod paths to raise the ire of the unbelievers, or received any injury whatever from an enemy. For Allah suffers not the reward to be lost of those who do good. Nor could they spend anything for the cause, small or great, nor cut across a valley, but the deed is inscribed to their credit, that Allah may requite their deed with the best possible reward. Nor should the believers all go forth together. If a contingent from every expedition remained behind, they could devote themselves to studies in religion and admonish the people when they return to them, that thus they may learn to guard themselves against evil. O you who believe, fight the unbelievers who gird you about, and let them find firmness in you, and know that Allah is with those who fear Him. Whenever there comes down a surah, some of them say, Which of you has had his faith increased by it? Yea, those who believe, their faith is increased, and they do rejoice. But those in whose hearts is a disease, it will add doubt to their doubt, and they will die in a state of unbelief. See they not that they are tried every year once or twice, yet they turn not in repentance, and they take no heed. Whenever there comes down a surah, they look at each other, saying, Does anyone see you? Then they turn aside. Allah has turned their hearts from the light. For they are a people that understand not. Now has come unto you a messenger from amongst yourselves. It grieves him that you should perish. Ardently anxious is he over you. To the believers is he most kind and merciful. But if they turn away, say, Allah suffices me. There is no God but He. On Him is my trust. He the Lord of the throne of glory supreme.